What's up? It's your favorite lawyer, and you are coming to the court of my public opinion, okay? Y'all already know you send me your uh, questions, okay? And then I bring you to the court of my public opinion, and I rule, okay? If you don't like what I got to say, don't send me no questions to my court, and you don't have to hear what I have to say, okay? This is for entertainment purposes only. Everything here is alleged, okay? I want you all to know that I'm not doing any background research or evidentiary procurement processes as I do when a case comes in my office. So I'm going strictly off of what you are telling me, which sometimes is not enough to render an adequate opinion. However, I will bring you in my court and let's go. First question, we're going to have it a, be a criminal question. Let's be a criminal show, Okay. Well, I thought it was a criminal question. It ends up being a child custody question, but let's go ahead and... Let me see. No, we're going to do criminal, y'all, because I don't want to do any more side family. I just can't. Okay. Boom. I was in a motorcycle accident in July of 2021. I have a felony assault charge. I'm currently on deferred probation. Am I SOL? I guess that's shit out of luck. I don't know. Let me see what she says. Woman was texting and driving, came into my lane causing a wreck, and then tried to flee the scene of the accident. The guy who was behind us pinned her truck so she couldn't leave. I have a broken back, neck, arm, wrist, hand, shoulder, and a brain injury. Will my felony assault charge that I'm on deferred probation for be an issue? I have no other things on my record. I have no traffic violations. I've been sober for three years. I have a lawyer. I'm just freaking out now that I've been out of work since July because of the accident and I'm living in pain and able to provide for my family. All right. Let me explain something to you guys. If you're on deferred probation, you have not been convicted of a felony. Okay, if you are on deferred probation, you have not been convicted of a felony. I do understand why you're worried, sir, because you do have a criminal history and you were in a car accident. You were hurt severely. You can no longer work. And now you're worried about your credibility being at issue in a criminal and a civil liability case. Right. And so what you're saying is that you've been sober for three years, etc. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that that stuff doesn't possibly come in. Um, the fact that you weren't convicted, so they cannot say that you were convicted of it. But if you have a history uh, or you have other convictions for drug offenses, um, for alcohol offenses, that will come in. Um, if you have um, a prior issue with drugs and they ask you about that, you do have to tell them the truth. Now, it seems as if your facts are open and closed, okay? Um, it looks as if, you know, you were minding your business, okay, and she just came into your lane, and she did it so bad that somebody else had to keep stop her from fleeing the scene. So, I don't know whose credibility, credibility is worse right now, hers or yours, because I understand that you have a criminal history, but again, just because you're on defer don't mean shh. Unless it's for a drug offense or alcohol, and then it does kind of come in a little bit. Now, your attorneys have to fight to keep that out. They know what to do. The other attorneys are going to fight to bring it in. They know what to do. Just in the court of my public opinion, this is how I would feel if I was a juror. If I was a juror, I would probably want to know that you have a history for that. But if that shit has nothing to do with what's in front of me, I don't care. And if I have another witness saying they saw her hit you, and she came into your lane while she was texting. And they she tried to leave. And they had to get her along with the police that cooperates the same thing. I don't know what your criminal history has to do with anything. Because at the end of the day, your credibility is not an issue when it's cooperated or added to someone else's story as well. So one thing I always do as a... Um, when I'm on the car wreck side and I'm prosecuting a car wreck case and I have a criminal um, defendant or someone with a criminal history is I find other ways to corroborate what they're saying. Police reports, witnesses, other things, videos that will corroborate my client's story so that they can't just say, well, your client's a felon, so his credibility is that issue. Oh, really? If it is that issue, you tell me why the fuck this man said it, that person said it, video shows it, this person said it, cop said it, they said it, this person said it. So then at that point, 
who cares, you know, that my client's credibility is not, you know, the best because you're not going based on my client's credibility. You're going on the credibility of all these other people and then my client is throwing on top of it and saying, hey, this is what happened. So it puts things in a different realm. And that's something, again, that your client, that your attorneys will know how to do. Don't worry about it. It's not your fault that you got hit. If you're not liable for it, you're not liable for it. And I'm trusting, believe you me, if you have an attorney, you should be fine, okay? I would assume that you weren't under the influence of anything if you called the police out to the scene and you didn't get arrested for a DWI or DUI. So that's good also. The cops came out. They spoke to you. They didn't feel like anything was wrong with you because they didn't require any testing. And sh they still got the police report done. So guess what? You're good there. So I would say don't worry about stuff. And don't let people get your, use your past against you. I get so mad when people use their past to hold them. Your past is a good indicator of your future, but not always. Do you understand? And it's stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with your past. Don't let somebody bring it up to you. Okay? I would be like, this is a car wreck case. She hit me. Police came. I wasn't drunk, clearly. Or I wouldn't have been walking away. Okay? Especially being on probation or deferred adjudication for an offense that deals with alcohol or drugs. So, I would assume that the police saw that when they pulled up. These, that's how you deal with that. Okay, I'm sure the police already knew and they didn't have a problem with it. So, why should the jury or anybody else have a problem with you? Of course, the other side's going to bring it up. But you can't stop people from bringing up bullshit and trying to run with it. You just got to let them know and chop them off at the knees. It ain't going to work. Okay, so I'm sure your attorneys have that. They'll take care of you there. I want you not to worry about that, okay? Don't worry about that. You have other evidence. You have other cooperating witnesses, etc. They had to stop her from taking off. And if she was not in the wrong, why was she trying to flee? Okay, so I wouldn't even be worried about that. So don't you let anybody hold you back from your greatness. Do you understand me? You've been sober for three years. You keep on trucking. You keep on trucking, sir. And you sue the hell out that lady. Next day, so up. Uh, because you're already doing it. Move forward. Move forward. Enough reasonable suspicion for DUI. I was walking out of a bar back to my car. Is that enough reasonable suspicion for a cop to stop me when I'm returning to my vehicle? Well, <laughs> it depends on how you was walking. Were you walking or were you staggering? Okay, I'm not trying to be funny, but you know, that's a crazy question for you to ask me. I was walking to my vehicle and the cop stopped me because I was coming from a bar. Okay, were you coming from a bar? Were you staggering? If you were staggering, yes. If you were not, no. And I would continue to walk on or I would walk back in the bar and call a, a car. Because I wouldn't be talking to an a, a officer with alcohol possibly on my breath as I'm trying to wheel myself behind the vehicle so that he can then stop me. Okay? So why don't you just turn around and go back in and go call a ride? I wouldn't even talk, well, talk to the police. I wouldn't be talking to no police. Yes, I'm sorry. So I don't know what to tell you. Is it enough reason suspicion that you are just walking? No. If you are staggering, absolutely. So I'm going to tell you now. I have clients tell me all the time, it was a pebble driveway. It was an uneven surfacing, whatever. If you're staggering, yes, they can talk to you. But you shouldn't be behind the wheel of a car or walking towards a car. So, for all they know, you was going to take a piss around the corner. They don't know what you were doing. Okay, so, I mean, I hope you did not get in the car, though. If they were talking to you, you would have turned around and walked back in, right? You just didn't finish that question. It was just real quick. So, I'm just saying, all you said is, is walking out of a bar back to your car enough reason suspicion for a cop to stop you and return it to your vehicle you didn't get behind the wheel so what are they stopping you for what violation are they stopping you for because you have not gotten behind the wheel or are you in the car now turning it on after they saw you staggering so it, all those things come into play but yes depending on if it's uneven yeah if you're staggering yes okay next case because if you're staggering yes I need a little bit more information now, but yes, if you're staggering, yes, yes. All right, next case. See, this is why I like my criminal clients. They just, they ask, they short and sweet. If I have an ankle monitor on and I get kicked out of the place, what should I do? I'm on an ankle monitor and my girlfriend is kicking me out. It's the weekend. Who should I contact? If I change my address, will I be able to live with my brother? He's a felon. Baby, let me tell you what I tell all my clients. Do not bond out to a female's residence, especially if you a cheater. <laughs> Y'all do this all the time. And see, half the time, the girl's going to reason that you went to jail, but then you determine that you're going to let her do the bond. 
And then she gonna have you right where she wants you. And as soon as she catch you on the phone with some other girl, she gonna put you out. She gonna find a way to send you back to jail. She gonna slap herself, say you did it. She gonna push you. You gonna push her back. You going to jail. Why do y'all put your hands in a woman? Put your lives in a woman's hands. Women are emotional creatures. Why are you trusting her with your life, baby? You should have been at your brother's house to begin with. He ain't gonna put you out over you texting. Oh, okay. That's what you know during well, that's what you was doing. She caught you on the phone and she putting you out. That's fine. But baby, you need to be contacting the court. You need to go to the court and let them know you have been put out your home. And you have nowhere to go. I mean, if she'd have put me out that house, I'd have went straight to the anchor model spot and slept outside until they opened and asked them what to do. Okay, straight to the lawyer's office. I'd have been camping outside, waiting till Monday morning till he came back. You just sent me on the GPS somewhere, but I wouldn't have been where I wasn't supposed to be. Okay, or I'd have had my lawyer bring it. I understand it's the weekend. First thing that I'm going to order that you do is get rid of this woman. She's trying to send you to jail, baby. And I don't care how mad she is at you and how many women you done text while you living in her house. She should not wish the jail upon you. And if she is that type of individual, don't trust her with your life because you may really need some shit one day. And she will put you out there because she's mad at you over a text or a call of a woman. You cannot. Women are emotional creatures. If they're not stable enough, you can't be with them. I'm sorry. And if you know she gets mad, she likes to pop off, those type of women, you do not bond out of jail and go to their house. And you definitely don't put them on your bond. And you definitely don't have your life in their hands. That's, that's not what you do. So that's where you messed up at first, son, is that you went to her house and you bonded out to her house and you turned your stuff on at her house. And then you called a hoe. That's what you did. That's the second thing you did wrong was call a hoe. Okay? At her house. Because don't disrespect her. You know she gonna put you out. You already know this. Okay? Now you want to change your dress to live with your brother. That's not up to me. That's going to be up to the judge. And if your brother's a felon, I'm going to assume the judge is not going to want your brother there. Or you with your brother, that's a felon. I don't know. But you need to do some talking and you need to do it fast. It's Monday morning. I hope you went somewhere to go get some assistance. But what is going on with y'all and these women? If you're not married to them, you don't need to be doing this. This is not what you do. Okay? I'm tired of it. I am so tired of the next case. I'm tired of telling y'all this. And y'all look at me when I tell you. And I'm not telling your girlfriends nothing. You authorize them one day to know what's going on with your case. You deauthorize them the next day. Don't tell her nothing. Then you authorize her back. Let her know. Don't tell her nothing, baby. I don't go back and forth. Once you be authorized, she is no longer authorized. Do not call my office. I don't go back and forth with the women. I do not. Here goes the question. Where can I pick up my firearms? My case was dismissed, baby. Nowhere. Unless you got a court order. Okay? And let me teach y'all something. Court orders. You have to get a court order to restore your property to you after a case has been dismissed. Um, and it's a motion that has to be filed. A lot of the times people have a court-appointed attorney. And so the court-appointed attorney does not file the motion for them because it's not something that has to do with the underlying case and they cannot do so. There are some times that um, you have the a free world attorney, but you don't want to pay your free world attorney to go to court for you to fight for your gun back. But that is a motion that has to be filed. You have to file that in court. You have to notify the other side. You have to appear in court on it, get a court order. With that court order, you will get your gun back. That court order has to be taken to wherever your gun is housed. If it's HPD, if it's, you know, state troopers, uh, if it's Harris County Sheriff's Office or Harris County Constable's Office in whichever precinct. And you have to, you know, show up with your court order. Then they've got to track it down because your gun is locked up and it's with um, a, it's in a safe place. Um, and they have to find it and then they have to send you to the right location so that you can pick it up with that court order. But you need a court order in order to get a gun restored to you on when a case has been dismissed. And no, attorneys do not do them for free. Maybe you can find one that will, but I doubt it. Most of the time, they will not do that for free um because it's an extra it's it's a, it's it's more work <laughs> and so if you want them to do it then you're gonna they're gonna charge you um they don't charge you very much though they don't charge you very much um and they can go get that court order for you and then give it to you and then you can go get your gun but you're gonna need a court order restoring that property in order for you to get that gun so that's what you're missing and that's what you need and you kind of got to move kind of quick so you can get that taken care of okay let's move on to the next oh and let me tell y'all something else a lot of times people like the because the police stole my gun let me tell y'all something evidence is not something that the police want okay i'm not telling you this because i'm on the side of the police i'm not saying that okay i am a criminal defense attorney i do fight my cases okay i fight my cases uh, trust me 
Okay, I also sue officers, law enforcement agencies, cities, and states for my clients on these criminal cases. Okay, I don't play. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Some shit don't make sense. And they don't want your gun because they have enough guns. They're police officers. They got plenty of fucking guns. They don't need your guns. They got plenty of guns. They like guns. That's why they're a cop. Okay? Um, and they also have to keep up with these guns. Okay? They have to do audits. Okay? They have to do so much paperwork to keep your little gun that they don't want that shit. So they will freely give it to you. Trust and believe you me. They don't want to keep up with that gun. They don't want to keep up with it because it's too much paperwork to keep up with a gun in Texas as an officer. They don't want it. So file your motion, more than likely, that you're going to get it back. from. You're going to get it from the officer. More than likely, the judge will get it back to you, but you're going to get it from the officer. They don't want your gun, okay? So don't think the officer stole your gun. I have had guns come back after years because we just couldn't track it down. We kept fighting, arguing with the officers, pushing stuff through, talking to sergeants. But I have never had it come back where the gun never came forward. Like, I couldn't find the gun. Eventually, it was found, Okay. And I always tell people, don't wait till after you've been on deferred and all this other stuff. Move to get the gun right after the case is dismissed or after, you know, however that is. If you're on deferred and you know you're not going to get a conviction for it, start asking the judge if they will restore it now. And if they don't want to give it to you now, they can give you, at least you got the motion filed so you can get the order signed when you get off of probation. You can go in there yourself and move on that uh, motion that your, that your attorney has already filed. And has it sitting in the case. Um, because the longer you wait, your gun is here, there, it's in this storage unit, it's in that one. They've been five, you know, five buckets of paperwork on it. And you got to go through all five buckets to figure out where it's at. And not you, but the police. And, of course, that's not on the highest list of, of things that they have to do because there is crime and people are running amok. So you'll get your gun. It'll just take forever. So if your case has been decided, you need to move quickly on that gun. Do not wait until you're off of deferred. At least start, at least having, you know, somebody work on that stuff now so you can get your gun back, okay? Because the cops don't want your gun, but your gun going to be hard to find. I'm just being honest with you. Don't be looking under rocks for the gun. It's going to be somewhere. What rock, I don't know. Okay, last question. My husband has been granted parole for uh, January 2022 in Fort Bend County, Texas. Okay, and a TDC transfer facility. But is getting picked up for a bench warrant in Jefferson County, New Orleans. Looks like he will not be going anywhere but to Jefferson County, New Orleans, girl. He has not violated parole. It don't matter, girl. He done done something else. He hasn't even received a date yet, girl. He going to be waiting. He is currently doing good time. It don't matter, girl. New Orleans want him. The warrant is due to the same charges from the same individual, just in a different state from the same year, just a different date. Okay? Does this affect parole and how? No, it does not affect parole because he's been paroled already, right? But he finna go fight that case. So what it's gonna affect is your heart. Your heart and your ability to see him because he's gonna have to make bond out in New Orleans before he can come home. And that's just what it is. They gonna pick him up from TDCJ. They're gonna transfer him to Louisiana. He's gonna need to bond out and then he'll be able to come home. And then he's gonna have to fight that case over there. Just because it's the same person in the same year doesn't mean it's the same day. And it can't be because I don't think that, you know, two counties can have the same case. So, I'm assuming he went somewhere else with her and did it again. That's her allegation. So, he just has to fight the case. But he's not coming straight home. I'm sorry. He's got to go over there and then come back. But it's all right. Get your bond money together. Get him out. Get him home. And you'll be good. Louisiana just wants the money, baby. They don't want the body. They want the money. Get the, give them the, get the bond money over there. Once they shuffle this body over there. You get that bond money over there, your man will be home in no time. Don't worry. But he's going to have to fight that case. So you need to get him a lawyer, girl. But he's all right. It's not going to affect his parole. He's already been granted parole. They ain't going to retroactively do nothing. It's the fact that <laughs> he now has to deal with that new case. That's pretty crappy. But you're fine. All right. Well, that'll wrap it up for today with the criminal, uh, criminal cases. Okay. You remember, if you guys have any questions for me, you would want your uh, question to end up on a show, just go ahead and email me, booker at bookerlawfirm.com. Put a YouTube show in the heading so that it does not get transferred to admin automatically because it will, if not. Um, Y'all have a fantastic day. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit your notifications button so that when I do upload stuff and I can peer out of the dark hole that is my work, Okay, and come up for air and have a show for you guys. You'll know what's coming up. Okay, 
Until then, I'm signing off. Court stands in recess. It's your favorite attorney, Attorney Ali Booker. Y'all know y'all like coming to the court of my public opinion. Don't try me. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>